You know what I mean? It, it can be like, um, and we really need to start saying, okay, God sent the Savior because without him, we would destroy ourselves. You don't believe that? I was even looking at the fact is, and I should have brought it up, was if you ever noticed that the first man born from Adam and Eve killed his younger brother. And then you thought, you, you, you're like, how, why did that happen? How could he kill his, first, his younger brother? You know, it, it was, it was uh, in the Genesis story, and maybe it's probably better to do, maybe some of you may want to see it. Why don't we do that? Let's let's see that first chapter here. Uh, it's in Genesis chapter three, and I'm, I had a book. Excuse, excuse me for uh, stooping down. I got, that's where the computer's at. <laughs> but I think it's, it's probably worth looking at it. You know, it's probably worth looking. So, because you know, it's really the my intent is to uh, equip the saints to do the work of the ministry, right? And to equip you is to make sure that you know and have the tools to be able to deal with life. That's what we have to do. We have to deal with life. And one of the things of dealing with life is the, the fact that uh, we have to really recognize the importance of the, the scriptures, the foundation of scriptures. Now, one of the things I do want to caution is there's quite a few people that like to use the scriptures for weapons. And that's that's what you don't want to use it. If you, if you want to use a weapon, you use it as a, as, as a spiritual weapon, not as a, a weapon to cause people to, to hate you and put you down. You know, it's, it's about making sure that you know the uh, you know where to go to 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 renew your mind. A certain thing. But if you see that in, in, the, in the scriptures here about Cain and Abel, you know, I, I paraphrase that 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 particular one. I didn't bring the slides up. I'm bring the slides up. I'm create slides for this this presentation. But the there was this thing about they was doing offerings. You know, starting in uh, chapter four, uh, there was offerings that was given by Cain and Abel, and when Abel gave his offering, the first fruit the first fruitlings, the first, the first uh, lambs, he put lambs that he had called first fruit, those that born, he was responsible for tending the sheep. And therefore, he, when he gave his offering, he gave not just an offering for himself, if you look at it, because he said he gave the firstlings of the flock. He put an ass on it. And if you're going to offer it, it's, it's Obviously, he's not doing uh, a lamb, four lambs or whatever number of lambs that he was doing. He wasn't going to put multiple lambs on the altar. He was doing it as a, a sacrifice, the blood sacrifice for, for what God wanted them and instructed, obviously, Adam to do. Yeah, the thing is, and I always notice, and most people didn't notice that when I said firstlings, and I put an S there, that means being that he was responsible for the animals, most likely the firstlings was not just for him. That's kind of why it's plural, for his brother, for his mother, and for his father. Because all of them had to do, because obviously they were doing that as a means of worship to God. So he was providing the blood sacrifice, the covering of sin for all of them because he was responsible for them. Now some people say, well, it don't say that. Well, put it this way. If you are responsible for the sheep, what do you do when a person, you know, you go to any family that's doing it, you can go to any farm that does it. I think whoever is responsible for what they're doing, what they do goes to the family, not to uh, 
that person is tending the, the, the lambs or the sheep or somebody was tending the sheep or, the, or somebody was tending the, the garden, they not tend the garden for themselves. You could take it for the one, but I'm just telling you, I know it was easy for man because man could be so selfish to do that. But I know in reality, uh, a family that, that wants to stay together, they, they farm together as everybody benefits from that labor. Simple as that. So therefore, Cain had an offering available to him, just like Abel, just like Adam, just like Eve. They were tending those sheep, and he had Adam laid out the responsibility, and Cain was a tiller of the ground. So he was a farmer. He was to bring in the different types of for the wheat, for the bread, and, and for the to, you know all the good things that comes out of farming. But Cain said that he wanted to take the, the fruits, the tomatoes and the, the wheat and, and everything else that was tilled from the ground and present that as an offering to God. <laughs> now, that's not like a good idea. And the fact that this is, he just wanted to say, Lord, thank you for bringing this great harvest, obviously. You know? But God didn't have respect for that offering. He had respect for Abel's offering. And the reason you had respect for Abel's offering because it was not just uh, bringing forth what you were responsible for tending. It was the symbolic of the, the, what the, the, the lamb that was slain from the foundation of the world for mankind. That was just a foreshadow. That, that blood sacrifice that the when they back in those biblical days when they said did blood sacrifice uh, of animals, not people, <laughs> of animals, um, that was was unto God, you know? And the obviously the, the tilling of the ground was not going to bring forth any blood sacrifice of animals. Make sure you put that down there uh, to wash away sand, to cover transgression. Um, so, it being the fruits of the ground, God had no respect for it. And, and, and Cain was angry. Cain lost his continent, and God asked him, he said, why are, you, why, are you, why are you angry? If you did well, would you not be accepted? You know, that's, that's the descriptor there. Um, but, God, but Cain obviously didn't take the counsel of God. And somewhere along the line, he decided to go, him and Abel, walking in the, in the field, and Cain killed him out of envy. You know, Hebrews say it out of envy, his evil work out of envy. He killed his brother, the first man, the first man in, in, the, in our life of man, the history of man. You know, we're talking about history, the, the first man killed his brother, his second brother, the second child born to this, into the world. And once again, even that's a foreshadowing because if you look at it, and that foreshadowing is you have the first covenant, or how would you say, the first Adam, and then Abel represents the last Adam. And just like when Jesus, Josh, Yeshua, showed up in Jerusalem. And after his end of his three-year ministry, the children of God, the Hebrews, they killed the Jews. They killed their Messiah. They didn't recognize him. They killed him. And that's, that's that foreshadowing that happened in Genesis. And I keep sitting there looking at the day. And I, and I look at why is it so many times you see the, uh, the anger and the political divide. Uh, I look at when, why, why is this, this, this racism? I was sitting there saying the other day, or I may have said it today, I, I, I would kind of ask myself, when you talk about, uh, let's talk about, about racism, the, 
us the anger that I that it was seen or the atrocities that was done to to people of color in this country. And, and you're trying to say the background for that. Where's the background for that? Right? What 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 what's the foundation that will allow people to, to do such bad things? And then I look at the when I'm talking about bring up the modern times about the political divide. Uh, <laughs> The, the people like the, the right now we're going through this January 6th uh, committee, giving out the information and then replaying what happened on January 6th in 2021. And you sit there and say, what was the basis for the anger that these people allowed to be manifested on January 6th to our capital, to our federal government? Not a police department, not the protest that happened with thing called Black Lives Matters, but our government, the seat of power that we has bestowed on this country. And based on what I call, and I'll tell you again, is a lie. And somebody said that, and it's funny, I talk to people and they sit there and say, well, I believe something happened. And you ask yourself, okay, well, we had 60 court hearings gone to the Supreme Court, Georgia, we had hand count. I mean, we actually hand counted the ballots. We ran it through the machine. It was validated from each local poll, right? You know, like where I, when my cast my ballot at, those people validated the numbers from theirs. And, and it went, I guess, moved from from a poll to a, to a district, to a region, all the way up to the state. And then the state validates those numbers. Arizona even had a hand count, run the machines again, and then even had a partisan, you know, the Republican Party themselves, uh, do a inventory of the ballots. And they found even more about more election votes Went to the other friend, well, the candidate. And yet people still, even today, I mean, <clears throat> I mean, I talked to somebody a few weeks ago after Arizona count, after the Georgia recount, and still said, I think something happened. But you think it's something happened, but not even going by the facts of what was counted, you ask yourself, where'd that come from? Because Right now, until you can, I even had a guy voted. I told him to, uh, if if he if he can find one hundred dead people that voted, I give a hundred dollars. I told him that if he give if if he can just find twenty five dead people that voted in Georgia, I give him a can of soda. I mean, we'll we'll buy soda, so it won't be so too expensive. It'll be just a reasonable uh, token. Uh, you get you get a bottle of water, soda, beer, whatever you want. And, and but bottom line is, one of us going to be right, one is going to be wrong. And the point is, if you can't prove something, why do you keep keep on telling the same story? Even though we demonstrate, I don't know how many. You always ask yourself, what has I got to demonstrate to show you that these are the results of an election? I, you gotta ask yourself that question. That's what I have to ask. I said, what do you have to do to demonstrate that that was the actual results of the election? And then that's what the January 6th committee is going through the whole process of hearing just to lay down the facts for the American people. And then we find out that some people, some leaks in some news outlets don't even show it. At least one. Everybody else is all looking at it. 20 million people look at it. And I think 20 million or more will look at it next week. Why? Because they want to hear the truth because too many people want to operate a lie. And those are the type of things that we have to watch out for.
and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things he's done in our lives. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Love you.